Okay, this is a recap of everything from linear relations. So the first thing we did is called scatter plots, and it's in section B1. So we looked at a graph, and this shows a graph of people's age and their height. So for example, this two-year-old is roughly, hmm, I don't know, maybe 40 centimeters tall. This four-year-old is <clears throat> maybe 80 centimeters, whereas this four-year-old is only 70 centimeters. So this is a graph of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people and their age and their height. So in a scatter plot, after you make a graph like this, which is called a scatter plot, you can see if there's a relationship between age and height. So it looks like from the graph, as age increases, as you get older, your height increases, you get taller. And we can see that from the graph. We call it like the trend is going up to the right. So we can draw this line which we call a line of best fit. And it tells us that as you get taller, as you get older, you get taller. Um, and we can also describe this since it's going up to the right, <clears throat> we call that positive correlation. Okay, next thing. Oh, I guess I should tell you if you had a if you had a graph of something and the points were going down to the right, like down this way, you would call this negative correlation. And negative correlation just means that as one variable is increasing, the other one's actually decreasing. And there's also such a thing as no correlation. So you could have points just scattered all around your graph that aren't even related to each other. So we would say that's no correlation. Okay, and that's scatter plots. Okay, so let's move on to B2. So here we were given a description. A water park charges you $10 just for the admission, just to get in. And then they charge you $2 every time you go on a ride. So we can make what's called a table of values. So this is a table. And we fill it out by looking at the cost. So for zero rides, it would cost us still $10 because we have to pay $10 to get in. If we only went on one ride, we would pay $2 plus the admission fee, so $12. If we went on two rides, we would pay two per ride, so two times two is four, plus 10, 14. If we went on three rides, three times two would be six, plus 10, so 16. And if we went on four, four times two is eight, plus 10, so 18. So that's a table of values, and then we could actually graph it. So we always take the first column and put it on the bottom. So this would be number of rides. And we take the second column and we put it on the side. Then we make a scale. So number of rides can start, always starts at zero. And I'm gonna just go up by one, two, three, four, five, and then cost. It's, it has to go up by an equal amount too. So I'm gonna say two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, four. Okay, so as long as you go up by equal amounts and then I can graph it. So for zero rides, it costs $10, so I put a dot. For one ride, it costs $12, put a dot. Two rides, $14. Three rides is $16. And four rides is 18. And then I connect the dots with a line. 
And that's how I draw, that's how I make a table and a graph from a description. And here's some other key features. So we can tell that the cost is actually increasing by $2 every time. It's actually going up by $2. So we call these numbers, we call them the first differences. And they tell us that our line is going up by equal amounts. So we know it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a line. It's gonna be a linear relation. So if these first differences, if these are all the same, then we know it's gonna be a linear relationship which just means it will make this perfectly straight line. If these first differences are not the same, then it's not gonna make a straight line. Okay, so let's look at a couple other tables and let's find the first differences. So I just did X and Y for the columns. So let's see, what's this one going up by? It's actually the same table. It's actually going up by twos. So we know this one would be linear. It's going up by the same amount. Let's check this one. Okay, so from 20 to 18, it's actually going down two. From 18 to 15, it's actually going down three. 15 to 11, it's going down four. And 11 to six, it's going down five. So now since these numbers, since these first differences are not the same, we would say this would be non-linear. So if you were to graph it, it would not make a straight line. So these are called first differences and they tell us if a graph will be linear or non-linear. And you don't even have to graph it. Okay, then there's two more really important things we learned in this unit. In this unit. And it's called rate of change and initial value. So the rate of change is how much a line is increasing or decreasing. And we measure it using something called rise divided by run. So to find the rate of change, you pick, you first pick two points on the line. Any two points, but make sure you can read what they are. So I wouldn't pick a point like this. Because it's like, um, what would that be at? It's like really hard to tell. So I would pick a point more like this because I know it's at the point two and 20. It's easy to read it. And then I'm gonna pick this point because it's easy to read. Then step two, you're gonna draw a triangle. So connect the points of the triangle. And then step three, you're gonna find the rise and the run. Okay, so the rise is this distance. So if we look at the y-axis, if you trace it back, it's going all the way from 20 up to 30. So that's a distance of 10, 10 kilometers. 20 to 30, that's a distance of 10, so the rise would be 10. And then I'm just gonna change colors. So then if we look at the run, that's the bottom of the triangle. So it starts at two and it goes over to four. So that's a distance of two hours. So the run would be two. And then we can actually divide those numbers. So 10 divided by two is five. So actually the rate of change, it actually tells us how fast this is going. So since it's in kilometers per hour, this person or whatever this is, is going five kilometers every hour. So that's what the rate of change tells us. And then another important um, piece of information we get is called initial value. And that's just right where the graph starts at. So where does the graph start? So when it's at time zero, it's at 10 kilometers. So 10 would be our initial value. And those two things are really important. So rate of change and initial value. And we can find them from a graph. We can also find them from a table. So it turns out that the
the first differences are also equal to the rise and the y, the x increases. So this one's going up by two every time. That's actually equal to the run. And since we know, so if we're finding rate of change, we can find the rate of change of this table because we know rate of change is equal to rise over run. Now we can tell the rise is two every time and the run is also two. Two divided by two is one. So this table actually has a rate of change of one. So if you were to actually like graph this table, you would see that the rate of change would be one over one. So let's find the next one. So, oh, we can't, it's nonlinear. Aha. And we can also tell from this graph, the initial value is actually 10. Because when x is zero, y is 10, right? The initial value is always when the x-axis, when this axis, when this value is zero, the initial value is this one, wherever it starts at. Okay, and the very last thing we learned about, which I'm just gonna say really quickly, is we learned how to figure out equations of things. We're kind of still working on it. So I'll just give you the condensed version. But we found out we can write equations of lines using this model. Y equals mx plus b where m is actually the rate of change, which I just told you about, and b is actually the initial value. So if you know the rate of change and the initial value, you can write the equation of any line. So take this one that we just did, for example. We found out the rate of change is five and the initial value is 10. Now, instead of using y and x, you should use whatever you're measuring. So this is the x-axis. But since it's got its time, I'm gonna use a t. And this is the y-axis. But since it stands for distance, I think I'll use a d. So if I wanted to write the equation, I would write it as d, so instead of y, equals, instead of m, I'm gonna put the rate of change, which is five, so five, then instead of x, I'm gonna use a t, plus instead of b, I'm gonna put the initial value, which is 10. So this actually is an equation that describes this graph. So y or d equals five t plus 10. And that is everything we've learned so far in linear relations.